You're probably too young to have heard of Perrington Stud. But at one time, in back rooms and bordellos all over the world, men would gamble their fortunes on a roll of the duck. The stud began its life as the sport of kings, but over time it became the pastime of charlatans. The names of famous players read like a who's who of scoundrels. Yet one character from the game's sordid history stands out as a rare example of sportsmanship and honest conduct. This is his tragic tale. The Battenberg kid was an upright young man with fine manners, good posture and clean fingernails. His musical prowess made him the darling of the aristocracy and he entertained them at glamorous functions all over the world. He had made quite a name for himself playing parents and stud in these exalted circles, but his story really begins in Saigon when he first played a game with the infamous Drop Down Davy. Davy was a disreputable cad with a chequered past and an arrogant disposition. He was considered a scoundrel even by the standards of those who play stud. The two men took an instant dislike to one another, and as a result the match was fierce and prolonged. By the 13th hole, Davy was down a snail and two limericks. When the kid laid a duke, two aces and a 25, he was sure he had Davy backed into a corner. But Perrington Stud is a fickle mistress, with a possible preference for older men. With a flourish, Davy threw in his trump, swallowed the puck, stepped out of the circle and buried his dart in the donkey. The game was over. As the kid, always a gentleman, began to count out his debt, Davy told him smugly he just didn't have what it takes to play the stud. Then, perhaps to teach his young opponent a lesson, Davy exercised a rare stipulation in the Saigon rules which allowed him to take his payment in flesh. The kid dropped out of the circuit after that. He tried his hand at his old job, but without his favourite finger, things just weren't the same. Tormented by his loss, he took to wandering the streets, replaying the match in his head time and again, until one day... He had a curious realisation. Davy had cheated. Consumed with rage, he vowed to track him down and settle the score. It was six years before he ran the trail to ground in the village of Cuesta Blanca in southern Mexico, where Davy was posing as mayor. You, sir, are a cheater and a cad, and I demand a rematch. Uh, right, yeah. I'll be with you in a jiffy. It's my deranged nephew. Davy agreed to a rematch, but when the kid arrived at the appointed hour, he was greeted with a nasty surprise. He awoke in a warehouse full of stolen artworks as the authorities burst in to arrest him. Protesting his innocence, the kid was shocked to discover he had once again been cheated by Davy. As soon as he was released 27 years later, he hit the ground running. He pursued Davy from town to town, from port to port, seemingly always just one step behind his quarry. He nearly had him cornered at a cockfight in Belize, and he missed him by less than a minute in Moscow. Fate just never seemed to be on his side. Then, in the badlands of Alberta, the kid finally got lucky. This time, he was taking no chances. With a rule book in one hand and a gun in the other, the Battenberg kid demanded his due. Eventually, Davy agreed. Six fours, rabbit in the hole. Raise five, bluff. Raise eleven, seven fours. Two over the top, swindle, double swindle. Ooh. Eight fours. It was perhaps the fiercest game of Perrington Stud ever played, and over the course of the night, both men suffered heavy losses. Finally, at five the next morning, Davy potted his queen. The kid was sunk. 
The humiliation of losing fair and square proved too much to bear, and something inside this once incorruptible man finally snapped. <laughs> Horrified by his own actions, the kid rushed to Davy's side, just in time to hear his final whisper. Now yeah, you're getting the hang of it. No one really knows what became of the Battenberg kid after that. Some say he went mad in the opium dens of Denmark. Others that he repented his crime and lived out his last days in the donkey sanctuaries of Micronesia. But if you ask me, this encounter probably changed that kid forever. Davy had taught him Perrington Stud's most valuable lesson. Rules are for suckers with fingers to spare. My guess is that he probably changed his name. Got some sort of brilliant disguise and went on to become the finest player of Perrington Stud the world had ever seen. And now, my young friend, a song. <laughs>